Hi, this is Jason Molesky. In this example, we'll take a look at how random assignment works in an experimental design. So this year, the high school has enough budget money to compare the online SAT course with traditional classroom instruction. 50 students have agreed to participate in an experiment comparing two instructional methods. Our problem is to describe how we'd randomly assign 25 students to each of the two methods, online or traditional. We'll want to take a look at how we do it using 50 identical slips of paper, how we do it using technology, and how we do it using table D. Perhaps the simplest way to go about assigning these treatments is to use the hat method. So what we could do is write each subject's name down on one of the slips of paper, put all those slips in a hat, and mix them thoroughly. Then we could draw them out one at a time until we have 25 slips. Those 25 students would take the online course, while the remaining 25 students would take the classroom course. Alternatively, we could write online on 25 of the slips and classroom on the other 25 slips, then put those paper in a hat and mix them well. We could have students come up one by one and, without looking, pick a slip from the hat. This guarantees 25 students per group with the treatments assigned by chance. We could also use technology to assign our treatments. So we could give numbers 1, 2, 3, and so on all the way up to 50 to the subjects in alphabetical order by last name. Then we could use our calculator's rand int command or a computer's random number generator to produce numbers between 1 and 50. The first 25 different or unique numbers that are chosen would select the students for the online course. Remember, we have to ignore repeats when they come up. The remaining 25 subjects would take the classroom course. Finally, we could assign this using table D. We could use the two-step process from random sampling to do the random assignment. So to do this, we'd have to start by labeling all of the individuals in the class. Since we're using a random digit table, we'd have to give two digit labels to each individual, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, and so on, up to 50. Then we'd randomize. We could go to a line of table D and read two digit groups moving from left to right across the row. The first 25 distinct labels between 0 and 50 that we encounter would select the online group. Remember, we'd have to ignore repeats, and we'd also have to ignore any numbers that fall outside of the 0, 1 to 50 range. Finally, the re remaining 25 students would take the classroom course. And like I said, we'd ignore repeated labels and groups of digits from 51 to 0, 0. Now, for some additional practice on how random assignment works in experimental design, try exercise 59. 